Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and welcome to Ask Dave episode 115. Today's topic is the combination of the SDR Play software defined radio front end coupled with the matching software SDR Uno. The two together make a powerful general coverage receiver. This combination covers 1 kilohertz to 2 gigahertz. Hams say that radios with coverage this wide are DC to daylight. While that upper end doesn't quite reach daylight, it is into the microwave range. So you have LF, MF, HF, VHF, UHF, and microwave all in one radio. That's amazing. What's more amazing is how well it does it and for a very reasonable price. I note again this is a receiver, not a transceiver. So it's suited for those who like to listen a lot or perhaps want a pen adapter to go with their radio. Now, what's a software-defined radio? It doesn't necessarily mean a front end and a computer but it does mean that the signal processing chain is done in modifiable software. Take for example my old Tentag Jupiter. Back when it came out around the turn of the century, the modulation and demodulation was done in software. Back then they had to move the last IF to only 25 kilohertz and then do things digitally after. Well, nowadays, manufacturers jockey for the number one position in how close they can get digitization to the front end. One of the current champions is the ICOM 7300, which basically digitizes the incoming signal without any down conversion. Then the rest of the processing is done inside a computer that's inside the 7300. It looks for all the world like a normal superhet radio, but inside it is anything but. So, note here there are two fundamental approaches. First, do everything inside a box with the reprogrammable software such as my Tentac Jupiter or the modern ICOM 7300. The other option is to have the RF front end in a box and do the rest in a regular computer. The jury is still out as to which is the better way. Even Flex Radio, a stellar modern SDR player, started with offering front ends and doing the rest in a PC to building a separate processing and interface box called the Maestro, and now is offering all-in-one packages like the Flex 6600M. Now, what's the big deal? Do these HDR radios make superhets obsolete? No, they don't. A good SDR and a good superhet can both receive the same. To the ear, they even sound the same. But the big difference is to the eye. A good SDR enables you to see a big chunk of spectrum all at once. The feature here is sometimes called a spectrum display, a spectrum scope, spectrum analyzer or pen adapter. Let's take a look at the spectrum display using the SDR Play with the companion SDR Uno software. We see across the top here the entire 40 meter band. On top is the spectrum display. You can see all the signals across the band. But easier to use is the waterfall display below that. Here you can see CW signals. This broad swath over here is FT8. The lower sideband signals start here and go up the rest of the band. Each one of these tracks is a voice signal. Of the many signals in the 300 kilohertz wide spectrum, the one the software tunes to is here, denoted by the red line. It's a little mind-numbing to see what's going on all at the same time, and we'll come back to this. So, getting back to the SDR Play and the SDR Uno. 
This software-defined radio consists of a hardware front end plus the signal processing and display software in the computer. Let's look first at the hardware. This is a black box, literally a black box. It has only two ports. This one is an SMA RF port and is used for all frequencies the radio receives. Like me, you may need to get an adapter or two so you can attach your HF coax. The other port is a full-sized B-type USB port. It still uses the same type of old but still readily available USB AB cable that is still used for HB printers. Note this cable is not supplied. However, I found several amongst my old computer junk. Let's take a peek inside the RSP1. I don't recommend this because as you can see the RF cable is attached on one end to the black plastic and on the other to the circuit board. You don't want to yank it loose. The circuit board is full of very tiny surface mount components. You would be ill-advised to tamper with any of this. Just close it up and be grateful for the sheer amount of processing power inside this black box. Here's the internal block diagram. Note the bias T at the bottom. This puts a DC voltage on the coax to help power a preamp that might be right at the antenna. The voltage is just shy of 5 volts. However, my MFJ1886 wideband receive only antenna requires closer to 12 volts. So I used the MFJ bias T and 12 volt power supply that came with the antenna. Next are the filters, which are special purpose for listening to broadcasts in medium wave, which is the US AM broadcast band, FM, which is the US FM band, and DAB, which is digital audio broadcasting, which you don't see much of in the US. Next, there's a variable gain preamp and, for VHF and above, a switchable low noise amplifier. Next comes a stack of filters that help keep out of band interference out of the way. The RF tuner provides the in-phase and quadrature signals, or IQ, which are wideband analog streams. These are digitized at up to 14 bits of quantization versus a cheap dongle's limitation of 8 bits. The SDR plays digital data is sent via USB to the computer. The USB part also contains multiple control circuits for all of this used by the software to select signal flow, filters, and gain level. The INQ streams are the currency with which the hardware and software play together. Several software packages are listed on the SDR Play website as being compatible with the SDR Play RSP1A. These include SDR Uno, which is the house brand software, HDSDR, SDR Console, SDR Sharp, and others. Given that the SDR Uno software is not only free, but also is made specifically for the RSP1A, we'll use that. SDR Uno is much like other popular SDR software for your computer. It accepts as input the I and Q channels and does processing from there. This approach keeps costs way down and also allows you to use different front ends interchangeably with different brands of software. However, note that there's a natural synergism to use SDR Play with the software built specifically around its unique capabilities. And that's SDR Uno. Now, grant you, that's a lot of processing in my laptop. But with the Core i7, my four-year-old laptop handles it with ease and can do other things at the same time. Once you unwrap your SDR Play black box and round up a cable, Go to sdrplay.com to the Start Here page. This will walk you through registering your box and will lead you to the download page for the software. 
Note that the software is available for many operating systems, including Raspberry Pi versions 2 and 3, though. Sadly, my old Raspberry Pi is version 1. Oh, well. Let's look at the Windows approach. The latest software, as of the date of this video, is version 1.22 and specifically addresses the new features of the RSP1A. Go through the usual download procedures. Note that you will need to keep your SDR Play black box disconnected from the computer until you are told to connect it. For someone used to the way Windows programs normally work, the SDR Uno interface can present a rather steep learning curve. I strongly suggest you download and print the SDR Uno user manual, also available on the downloads page. Follow the instructions. You may wish to make a list of acronyms. The manual and the SDR Uno interface is full of cryptic acronyms. After a while, you'll get used to them, but it can be daunting at first. When you open the software, several windows will open into what is called a workspace. You can save the workspace, meaning the way the windows are laid out, if you want to. The windows are individually movable. The first window is Main, and this is the top-level window, even if it's tucked down in the corner. If you close that window, you close everything. And you must click play to get things going. One thing to note is that the slider is your RF gain. Actually, it's your RF attenuation. At the bottom is the least attenuation, meaning the most gain. So it's backwards from a typical RF gain control. Also, the SR field is the width of the receiver. If you want to capture a bigger window, meaning more megahertz up to 10, you do it here. The next important window is the RX control or receiver control. This is the actual receiver. You can have up to 16 of these going at once across the same 10 megahertz slice, but let's stick with just one. Like all Windows, it has a settings button. You can change the frequency of the receiver. Note that you have preset band buttons. Click bands. You can choose the lower ham bands, including the new ones, the new VLF ones, the upper ham bands, or the shortwave broadcast bands. Or you can go directly to any frequency you want. Note that the receiver has memories, so you can return to something you find interesting. Here are the modes, AM, synchronous AM, FM, CW, double sideband suppressed carrier, lower sideband, and upper sideband, and digital. In the FM group below, when you choose FM, you can choose narrow FM, medium, wide, and super wide. Normal broadcast FM will lead you to the wide and super wide. There are some CW settings. Next come filter sizes. These will change depending on the mode you select. There's also a noise reduction filter, and you can adjust the level of this via the settings button. You can play with all the buttons. The bottom slider is volume. Now let's look at the big window. It's labeled main spectrum processor. All the ham bands are already pre-programmed, so you can look at the entire band. My goodness, look at all you will see. Note that you will see most if you turn the RF attenuation all the way down in the main window. Via settings in the spectrum window, you can squeeze or expand the spectrum values and the waterfall contrast. Now, the SDR Play is advertised as having a calibrated S-meter. Note that this means it's calibrated right here at the input to the SDR Play, which excludes the effects of the antenna and feed line. You can see the receiver settings over here in dB relative to a milliwatt. All signals are far less than a milliwatt, so the numbers are negative. Now, 
Scientists like to talk about signal strength in terms of dBm, dB relative to a milliwatt. But hams like to talk in S units. So just for comparison, S9 is defined as 50 microvolts across the input. These days, inputs are all 50 ohms. So doing the math, we find that S9 is minus 73 dBm. S8, which is a smaller signal by uh, half the voltage or four times the power, S8 is 79, minus 79 dBm. S7 is minus 85. On the display, we see that the noise floor is about minus 130 dBm, which is lower than S1, which is minus 121 dBm. Note that there are some complexities here because how far a signal will rise out of the noise is a function of the bandwidth of the signal as well as its power. This window, called the auxiliary spectrum processor, focuses on the signal selected by the red line and gives you an expanded version and you can hear it. And this window here is the memory panel, which I haven't figured out yet, so I'll save that along with the recorder for a future video. And you can use OmniRig and other software to coordinate what's displayed with what your station transceiver is receiving. In fact, my Yaesu FTDX3000 has an output called RF. It's the received RF after it's been cleaned up a bit. I connect this output, available on the back of the FTDX3000, directly to the input of SDR Play. So I can see what my receiver sees. If the radio is tuned to 40 meters, I can click on the 40 on SDR Uno. What I'm seeing on SDR Uno is the same thing my FTDX3000 sees and through the same antenna too. I can use this for directly comparing antennas. If I switch antennas to the rig, it switches them to the SDR play also. What's really useful is to search for activity. My radio has a small spectrum scope on the front panel, but it's nothing like this. So, how can you get one of these? You can order direct from the UK at sdrplay.com, which charges for shipping and to boot. They're back ordered right now. However, you can order from your favorite US distributor and often get it with free shipping. I got mine from Ham Radio Outlet in Denver. Since I'm in Colorado, I paid sales tax, but the shipping was free. So what's the bottom line? I love this receiver. I've purchased a couple SDRs in the past and have used this little Fifi rig extensively in making the general and amateur extra class training videos. This other one cost over $90 and is really rather weird to try to use with software. Neither of these hold a candle to the new SDR Play RSP1A. Go for it. But be prepared to have to climb an at times frustratingly steep learning curve for the software. Be patient and give yourself some time. If your station radio provides access to your IF, or even better, the RF coming from the antenna, you've got a great operating companion. Try the various filters and find yourself pleasantly surprised. And lastly, I'll note I wasn't sent this radio to review. Rather, I used the channel income to purchase it. I try to give an unvarnished review in any case, and I want to practice full transparency. If you'd like to learn more about software-defined radio in general, I suggest a book called Software-Defined Radio for Amateur Radio Operators and Shortwave Listeners by Andrew Barron, ZL3DW. It's available in both Kindle form and in paperback. In channel news, be sure to go to my channel page at youtube.com slash davidcastler 
and check the community tab. That's a great way I use to communicate with Augies all over the world. Please subscribe, share, and like this video, and please check out the tip jar or Patreon. And I still have a couple memory sticks with the uh, amateur extra videos on them. See all this on my support page at www.dcastler.com support. And the tech examination questions change this year. So I'm getting ready for a massive upgrade process this summer. Until next week, 73. Next week, we'll take a look at two portable antennas, a buddy pole and a loop, both loaned by KA0USE. We'll use the SDR Play software to find receiver to compare them with other antennas I have.